Hi, this is uh, John Hart from Town & Country Compounding here in Ramsey, New Jersey, uh, doing one of our little uh, video feeds that we like to put out to educate all of our patients and physicians and other prescribers that work with us. Uh, today I want to talk about Methylene Blue. It's a prescription item, and as you can see, it's a very, very blue capsule. Methylene Blue is probably, might be one of the oldest known synthesized drugs that we've ever had. So it's been around for a real long time, but we're finding a lot of new uses for methylene blue. Uh, every emergency room in the country carries methylene blue because they use it for methemoglobinemia, which is basically um, something that would occur, for example, if somebody overdosed on acetaminophen. So that's why they would have it in the emergency room. Um, it's also been used for tick-borne diseases, uh, particularly uh, Babesia and Bartonella. And particularly it's used with other antibiotics, and some of the physicians we work with have been finding it to be pretty effective for this. It seems to work to kind of break down the biofilms that uh, kind of cause the resistance to a lot of the different antibiotics that we see. But basically, um, methylene blue, it works on the cellular level. It works on the mitochondria. The mitochondria is like the powerhouse of our cells. The mitochondria is kind of like the engine that drives our cells. So it's giving us energy throughout the whole body. So it's helping with that cellular energy. It's working on uh, something that's called um, cytochrome, oxidase, uh, cy cytochrome oxidase, okay? And this cytochrome oxidase is a mitochondrial enzyme, and it helps, again, with that energy production in our body. So many of the disease states that we see really begin with or start with a malfunctioning of the mitochondria. And what we're finding with methylene blue is we think that it can be very neuroprotective and that it has many other different usages. Now, one of the main things we like to caution people is that if you're going to speak to your practitioner about possibly, you know, taking methylene blue or learning more about it, you should be making sure that you're working with a pharmacy that is accredited and knows how to compound properly. And you should also be making sure that the methylene blue is a USP grade. So that's a pharmaceutical grade that we would use here in town and country compounding. So the important things is it's accredited pharmacy. It's a USP grade methylene blue. And that you should work with a practitioner who's knowledgeable on the uses of methylene blue. And certainly you can always call us here at the pharmacy at 201-447-2020 or email us at TC Compound and we can direct you to uh, physicians and other practitioners that we know that are currently working with methylene blue around the country. Uh, the interesting thing is that we've seen a lot of uh, information or heard people on the internet talking about getting methylene blue without a prescription. And you know, we said, as you can see from the color, it is a blue, so it is actually an industrial dye. So you can buy it, you know, and um, you know, as a dye, but as a dye, it has many, many other toxic elements in it, like heavy metals and things. It's not the pure methylene blue that an accredited compounding pharmacy would work with. So it's important that you make sure that you're using a good source of that methylene blue. Now, um, because it is blue, the one thing, you know, I'm going to talk about side effects and drugs that you should, you know, avoid taking it with. But the one thing is it is blue. And we have pictures on our website of just the equipment that we use and how it can stain it and turn it blue. Uh, you know, your urine will be turned blue when you take this, even at a low dose. Uh, it's actually, it sounds funny, but we tell people to make sure that after you urinate that you flush immediately because if you leave that urine in the bowl, it can actually discolor your toilet bowl. Uh, some of the things you want to avoid taking with methylene blue are, you know, some of the drugs that we see for antidepression. So SSRIs, you know, like sertraline or SNRIs, which are the, the serotonin, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, MAO drugs, which are an old class of antidepressant. But you do have to be a little careful if you're using these um, drugs and make sure that you're uh, talking to your pharmacist, your practitioner, to make sure that there are no different you know, side effects that you should be concerned with. Another thing, there's a possibility if you have a glucose 6-phosphate deficiency. So that's a genetic deficiency, which your doctor can do a, a simple blood test on, but it should be avoided if you have that. And of course, if you're pregnant, because um, we do know that it can cause a birth defects, so any pregnant women should avoid taking methylene blue. You know, other than the uh, blue urine, you know, the, some of the side effects we see, which you know, typically are not until you get to the higher doses, are things like nausea, headaches, dizziness, uh, sometimes some increased sweating, uh, altered taste, 
but you know, I often see these when uh, patients are taking it at a higher dose. What we see here though at Town & Country Compounding is many of the practitioners we work with, they're starting at very low dose, typically five to 10 milligrams, you know, once a day in the morning, sometimes twice a day. Uh, we'll often see them start and titrate that up. Some of the docs that we were working with who are treating the tick-borne diseases, I see the doses going a little higher, 60 to 100 milligrams a day. But you can see these are all kind of below that uh, dose where they say that it can kind of become toxic. <clears throat> so some of the other uses that we've seen are, you know, as, as kind of like um, an anti, it's an antimicrobial, antiviral. So it's been used in Epstein-Barr. Any type of infection, you know, that infection can cause like uh, immunological dysregulation. So this um, is, is kind of like a byproduct of the infection. So that's where we've seen a lot of doctors using it there in, in that disease state. And also, like I said, the tick-borne diseases. And particularly if you think, if you've known anybody who's had Lyme disease, they have a very, very uh, low energy level. And as we talked about a little bit earlier, you know, the methylene blue works on the mitochondria, which is, you know, the energy powerhouse in the cell. So it's helping give us energy. It's not the energy of like having a Red Bull or, you know, a cup of coffee, but it's that uh, intracellular energy. But the real thing that I'm interested in it, uh, in methylene blue for, is it's the possibility in, you know, integrative medicine and healthy aging. There's a lot of interest in using methylene blue for uh, Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. There's a doctor, he's at the uh, University of Texas, and he's done a lot of research on methylene blue, particularly for Alzheimer's disease. And if you listen to some of the doctor's uh, podcasts or read any of his papers, you know, it seems to be that um, in medicine nowadays with Alzheimer's disease, everybody is focusing on what's called amyloid beta plaques and these tau tangles, okay? And, you know, what we found is most of the drugs that have been in trial uh, have failed, you know, the drugs that have been used for Alzheimer's disease. And most of the research so far has been done on, like, trying to prevent these uh, amyloid beta plaques. However, I use the analogy, those plaques, it's kind of like, um, you know, if your kid falls off their bike and scabs their knee, and a few days later they have a, a scar. You know, the scar is, you know, has occurred because of the, the wound. So these plaques, we're believing, are really in uh, dementia, are occurring, you know, after the fact. So that's a sign that you have either, you know, the beginnings of Alzheimer's dementia, or, you know, have had it for a long time. So the drugs that we've been trying to develop, you know, in the United States and worldwide, focusing on the plaques is probably not been effective because the plaques are occurring after the fact. So the interesting thing is that we see that this um, uh, methylene blue increases the cytochrome oct oxidase activity. And what we find as we age, uh, we see that the cytochrome oxidase slows down, which thereby slows uh, blood flow to the brain. And it seems to be that it's kind of the cytochrome oxidase or the decrease in its activity that's leading to the, you know, the, you know, the on early onset dementia, you know, Alzheimer's disease, which is, you know, typically then, you know, as the disease advances, leading to the uh, plaques and the disease as, you know, as we know it, if you've ever, you know, had a family member or a friend with Alzheimer's disease, it's terrible. So a lot of this research being done is maybe on this methylene blue. Maybe it's just, a, you know, that five to 10 milligram once or twice a day that we see. Could this be a drug that could be used to kind of prevent or slow down the pro progression of Alzheimer's disease? So that's where I think there's a lot of interest and a lot of papers on it. So far to date, uh, the, the clinical uh, trials that have been done on uh, methylene blue with Alzheimer's have been in the uh, rat model or animal model, and they've shown it to be, you know, fairly effective. So we do need some more studies in humans, but we are, you know, starting to see that I think this is a good possibility for this methylene blue. And of course, there's other things of talking about brain health that you can use. We have products here at the pharmacy. You can speak to Maria, our nutritional expert, about new adapt, brain sustain, memorol, fish oils, good quality fish oils. They're all good for brain health. But our hope as we learn more and more and we'll you know, get back to you and feel free to talk to us or speak to one of our pharmacists here, is that methylene blue may be a promising treatment to kind of slow down the progression of dementia and Alzheimer's disease that we see as, you know, in the aging population that we have. Thank you, and as always, if you have any questions, please, uh, please feel free to call us.